Welcome to our next section. This session is bring by Azuki Eno-san, and his topic is what for, where, and how to adopt MIDI 2.0. Azuki-san had a couple of Coast Cup session about .NET when he was a Mono and Xamarin developer. But after he graduated Microsoft, he has been a Zhou Xiu developer, enjoying music software hacks every day. And let's welcome him. Hello, thank you so much for coming to my talk on what for, where, and how to adopt MIDI 2.0 or MIDI 2. Maybe I would just say MIDI 2. There's no difference between MIDI 2 and MIDI 2.0, unlike Wave 3 and Wave 3.0, I guess. <laughs> There's no weird business there. So let's get started. Let me have a brief introduction to myself at Shieno and MIDI. Uh, I had been playing with MIDI since 20th century, quite old days. And when I was using MIDI and playing with MIDI, I was using a weird programming looking language called MML, Music Macro Language, which would look like a weird, weird like that. <laughs> and I was using that language to compile to standard MIDI file and uh, playing with MIDI in that way. And later on, I became a .NET developer. And when I was .NET developer, I created a MIDI library called Managed MIDI, which labels the truly cross-platform .NET MIDI API, kind of. Now, while .NET developers usually only care about Windows, my library took care of the cross-platform stuff, which is kind of unique at that, at that time. Maybe not that much nowadays. And later on, I ported everything to Kotlin because, because I became more like an Android-oriented developer. And, uh, I'm not going to ev uh, introduce everything right now because I don't have a lot of time. I only have 30 minutes, so let me skip it. <laughs> so what is MIDI? MIDI is a musical instrument digital interface. But <laughs> the only important part is interface because MIDI is not only used by only by musical stuff. Like, for example, IoT people say I uh, use MIDI technology too, and they were never uh, about music stuff. And the instrument, it's, it, it could be used all for, also for effectors, which is not instrument. So, and everything must be digital either. <laughs> so the only important part is interface, and it, it means it's commonly used. And MIDI 1 was standardized in 1983, which is like 40 years ago, <laughs> a quite old time. Maybe you are not even born yet. <laughs> and then MIDI 2 was upgraded to, uh, in 2020, quite recent. So let's look back and review what MIDI 1 was about. MIDI 1 was first about general MIDI, which is a set of uh, instruments indexed by number. And number zero is piano, and number eight is like uh, clavi uh, oh, What was that? <laughs> I thought. A cellista. Uh, 24 is about guitar, 48 is about strings, what, that kind of. As well as a couple of additional rhythm section instruments. MIDI 1 was also about MIDI messages, which are bytecode instructions to inst uh, synthesizers from, say, input devices like MIDI keyboards. For example, 0x90 in hexadecimal number means not on, and 80 means auto, not off, and E0 means pitch bend, <laughs> that kind of instructions. MIDI 1 was also about MIDI devices and the cables, and so any MIDI device, MIDI keyboards connected to computer using MIDI cables would be like, any MIDI keyboard would work with any computers. And also, MIDI computers could be connected to MIDI synthesizers using MIDI cable, and they can be also any kind of connectors, uh, connections. Lastly, MIDI 1 was about standard MIDI file format, which is a popular, used to be a popular way to distribute music and before MP3 became popular. 
I think those media files could be even embedded on the web page. And if you open the web page, it suddenly starts playing some weird music <laughs> that was due to the embedded tag on the web, the web page. So that was their kind of old story. So how do we compose music in, on PC in 2022? <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, we, mo we would mostly use DAOs, digital audio workstations, to compose music. And they don't really save music files in the standard MIDI file anymore. Also, we use audio plugin softwares, to, uh, such as VST3 plugins, audio unit plugins on Mac, or if you're a Linux user, LV2 plugins. And they are also uh, both for instruments and effect plugins, and they are not MIDI devices anymore. So why do we use audio plugins in, instead of MIDI devices? <laughs> First, we need, to, uh, we need unlimited kind of instruments beyond zero to 127. There are a lot more kind of instruments in the world, as well as uh, effect controllers. And we also need same identical audio outputs across computer environments on, which are connected to MIDI devices. Like in MIDI ages, we, uh, whatever composer in, uh, created in MIDI file would sound differently on your computer because the devices define, uh, determines what it sounds like. And we also need finer parameters, more than 0 to 127 and 7-bit data ranges. It's usually enough, but sometimes not, especially when computed. And we also want to pass the raw audio sample data to the plugins, to, especially for effectors, such as reverb or distortions or whatsoever. So since we use audio plugins anymore, is MIDI one gone? The answer would be between yes and no. The thing is that the basic song structures in audio uh, in digital audio workstations remain similar to standard MIDI file. Like uh, the, a song would consist of a list of tracks, and maybe a, uh, one track would, could contain a couple of clip music clips groups and they can be copied around or looped around but uh, each clip consists of a list of midi e uh, music events which is similar to the standard midi file which has a, a set list of tracks and each track consists of a list of midi events so the structure remains similar midi one standard midi files are still used for some um, contents, extra contents that composers could distribute as a supplement or bonus track, like uh, something like that. And digital audio workstations can also import and export the standard MIDI files too. And SMF uh, standard MIDI files could be also generated by some machine learning tools as well. So they, uh, importers would be useful there as well. Now, let's get into uh, more into DAO and MIDI stuff. So when we compose music on DAOs, we, use, we typically use piano rolls and uh, enter some note events of, over there, and sometimes with rhythm step sequences as well. And we also use MIDI keyboards to play some music on real time and have this audio workstation record it and put on the trucks. And when we play those uh, music that we created, it would send those MIDI-like events to each audio plugins. For example, if you have VSD3 audio plugin connected, it will send the VSD3 events, not, direct, not immediately MIDI events, I mean, VSD3 audio plugins accepts its own specific event types, uh, such as VSD3 not on, VSD3 not off, instead of a MIDI not on and MIDI not off. So they have to be taken care. It's also, it should be also noted that DAOs usually support 
more than one audio plugin formats. For example, on Mac, typical DOS would support both uh, VST2, VST3, and audio unit. And they could be used together, mixed together. And say, if, you, uh, that if DAO wants to play the sequence that the user entered, it must be, say, kept as some kind of abstract data sequence. And then it had to be converted to each event type for each audio plugins. And you know, audio plugin world is so divided world. So, and there are a couple of audio plugin formats that people use. For, for example, VST3 or Audio Unit or Linux LV2, and they take they accept only their own kind of events, not like media events directory. So they have to be translated everywhere. Even one single soft, uh, audio plugin software. Could, uh, when compiled to each format, each format binaries in, on each platform, they receive different kind of event as a binary data. So we need some kind of abstract representation of a musical event. So is MIDI one good for that? Uh, well, in general, yes, but it's MIDI one was, as you know, it was not expressive enough. Like the parameter range is limited to seven bits, and it has, uh, it, it should, there should be more features to support. But finally, MIDI 2 was standardized uh, in 2020, so, and it, MIDI 2 has 32 bit final parameters and something called power note expression and power note controllers, and then some rich features included. So it's good. The specification can, documents can be downloaded either on MMA, MIDI Manufacturer Associations, or Japanese organization called MA. And I would recommend MA to download the documentations because uh, MMA requires some login registration, <laughs> login, uh, sign up and registration to download the specification, which is kind of awkward. In MA, you can just go to uh, the web page and download it. It's simpler. So finally, <laughs> I'm talking about MIDI 2.0. <laughs> so what are the MIDI 2.0 specification components? There are four significant documents within the document archive. The first three are MIDI CI, uh, which is a MIDI capability inquiries, and MIDI 2A property exchange and profile configuration. And they are basically a, specif a specification about having two input and output connections uh, combined together to make request reply style messaging possible. So uh, it's just like UDP in HTTP3, like UDP is a unidirectional connection. And so MIDI one connection is unidirectional, similar. And two way uh, the connections could be combined together to represent a duplex, uh, duplex messaging. But these uh, specifications are kind of, uh, well, uh, low level and not, it doesn't really provide high level features. So the most important part would be MIDI to UMP, Universal MIDI Packet Specification, which contains a lot of fe new features. And there are a couple of other specification documents such as USB MIDI to protocols thing, but it's not part of this specification archive because it's rather part of USB specification. So I would skip that for today. So MIDI to UMP is the key thing. It's a brand new message format that is totally different from MIDI one messages. And it's, it consists of programmer friendly fixed integer size uh, bytes, four bytes or eight bytes or 16 bytes. So you don't really have to deal with byte arrays anymore. That's very programmer friendly. I mean, especially for real time audio programmers that can't really allocate memory on time. And MIDI uh, UMPs are uh, categorized by message type, and so, uh, there's a byte, byte code that 
represent message type and 0108 to 508 and some of those are left for compatibility with MIDI one. So the content would be similar to MIDI one. But the most important part is MIDI two channel voice messages, which has all those MIDI message features. And in this chart, the right side is, uh, if you are familiar with MIDI one specification, you would find that it's almost the same as MIDI one specification. Like 908 is for not on, and 808 is for not off, and E0H for pitch bend, and they are the same as MIDI one, except for F0 which is very new. But the right side is the most interesting part. Like, for example, now MIDI 2 simplified the way to represent RPN and NRPN, which were part of control change in MIDI 1.0 messages. But it was kind of annoying because it had to specify MSV and LSV and DTE. But everything is packed together into one single message in MIDI 2. So it's simpler. And the interesting part is Couple of, there are a couple of per note instructions that could perform per note operations over there. Let's have an example look at note or message. The first byte is the left topmost one, four and group. Four is a four zero H. And the group, uh, well, I will talk about that later. And the second byte is the status code and the channel, which is the, the, exactly the same as whatever MIDI 1 had, like 80H, uh, 80, and the zero part is actually channel, so it could be 8FH or 89H or whatsoever. And the group part is 4-bit, and the channel part is 4-bit, and they can be combined together to represent 8-bit uh, byte code, to represent uh, six, uh, 256 channels instead of MIDI 1, 16 channels. So it's, it became richer. And the third byte is not number, exactly the same as MIDI 1, and the velocity became like uh, two bytes bit long, 16 bits, so it's more finer than before. And it has some extra field called attribute, and it can be anything, and DAOs and plugins, uh, I mean, MIDI devices can have some agreement to what it to, what to represent, but in MIDI 2 specification, there's a predefined even attribute type called pitch 7.9, which can be used to represent a microtonal data, which means like less than uh, a semitone, which is useful for microtonal composers. And the control change is 32-bit data now, so it is richer now. And what is interesting is like uh, there, can, there is now per note controller message, which, is, uh, which has a note number and the control change index and 32-bit data. MIDI two channel voice messages are like that. And I should mention that these features are actually not very new in the audio plugins world, uh, especially VST3 and audio units supported this kind of features already. And even with MIDI one specification, there are a couple of uh, extended specifications that makes this kind of features possible. For example, MPE, MIDI polyphonic expression, was making use of some uh, universal system exclusive messages to send it to MIDI devices and instruct that uh, each uh, channel in this device could represent uh, multiple, uh, each note, like I uh, say, uh, maybe, maybe I should explain what the uh, MIDI one pitch bend status is like. If, we, if I put the pitch bend operation, it will be applied to channel. And if I play something like do, mi, so, and I want to change the pitch bend to and every, every note would move together. And it is not okay at, for some musicians. And some people want, for example, I, I might want to play like so and do, 
but it is not doable with MIDI one. But MPE makes it possible by assigning each node to different channels and then apply pitch bend values. So it's kind of a tricky specification, <laughs> but it works. And, but you know, it's a kind of walk around technology and it's a kind of ugly hack. <laughs> What is good about the MIDI 2 feature is like MIDI 2 made it standard and typically straightforward. So, are we MIDI 2 yet? <laughs> like, I mean, can we use MIDI 2.0 on my computers? <laughs> the platform support is not really well done at, some, uh, at this stage. Like, there's no support for Windows, there's no support for uh, on Linux, Alsa. Oh, we do have support for Mac on iOS on for MIDI two connections, and the, and the latest Android, under the thirteen, will support USB MIDI two. And also, can we buy MIDI two devices? <laughs> when MIDI two specification was announced, there was a, uh, I mean, Roland had announced that their device called A eight 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 Mark two will support MIDI 2. It's MIDI 2 ready, and it, MIDI, support, MIDI 2 support will, uh, is coming soon. And two years later, now, it is still coming soon. <laughs> so it's not here yet. <laughs> There's another device called Eli Touch. Eli Touch is a touch uh, point, uh, multi -point, uh, multi touch device that could send some users arbitrary input to as a MIDI instructions to the recipient. And it's still in production, uh, not in production yet, I and mean, it's under development. So I would say that there's no MIDI, new, MIDI 2 devices yet. <laughs> so can we even use it? Well, the answer is still yes, in theory. I'm saying yes because MIDI 2 messages could be sent over MIDI 1 connections. Actually, you don't really need any MIDI 2 connections because I mentioned the MIDI CI specification before. The MIDI, MIDI CI could tell the recipient MIDI, uh, target MIDI device like, I'm going, to, I'm going to send MIDI 2 UMPs from now on and if the recipient says like a reply is like okay, then we can start sending UMPs over MIDI one protocol. I mean, I mean MIDI one connections. The the first messages, I mean MIDI CI messages, are sent as universal system exclusive messages in MIDI one bytecode. So it's totally doable on MIDI one connections. It, the, the actual protocol is a, a little bit more complicated, so, but I'm, I'm not going to explain in depth. Let's go back to the DAOs, where we practically use MIDI instructions to compose music. So in MIDI 1 ages, we were using MIDI 1 keyboard, and it sends only MIDI 1 messages to the digital audio workstations. And then DAOs could uh, hold some abstract music sequence such as MIDI one, but it's not really feature for yet. But and then convert those MIDI events to particular audio plugin events such as AU events or whatsoever. But in MIDI two, you can say use MIDI two compatible keyboard to send MIDI CI set new protocol message to the DAOs, I mean, the keyboard could instruct that. And then if they agree to use MIDI 2, then it can send the UMPs. And also, DAOs now has better abstract sequence representation using MIDI 2. And it would be simply convertible to audio plugin events without losing any precision, which is very good. So how can we use MIDI 2 in audio plugins now? Audio unit, Apple audio unit still doesn't support UMPs, but uh, while Mac OS is really good about supporting MIDI 2, I mean MIDI 2 stuff in core MIDI library, but audio unit still doesn't support. But uh, so you will have to convert UMP uh, MIDI 2 events to AU events manually. VST3. 
is similar. But, but the Steinberg people said, like, VST3 is almost uh, capable of handling MIDI to UMPs in its own way. I mean, VST3 events. So it's almost compatible. Clap plugin is a very new audio plugin format that was announced and finalized only last month. <laughs> but uh, it supports MIDI too natively because it's very new and it's doable. It's a very interesting format that you might want to have a look. Juice Framework is an audio plugin, uh, audio development framework that many audio developers use. And it supports EMP processing already. And the next version will support MIDI to device connections, I mean USB connections, where uh, not all platforms are supported yet. The plugin base will still have to deal with the, uh, cannot, it still cannot handle UMP processing yet, but uh, since it can receive raw, raw MIDI buffers, it could communicate with those to use MIDI 2.0, and then it could, there's a chance to use MIDI 2. Those developers are really looking into MIDI 2 applicability there. So it's a, it's a kind of hot field. Also, there are some MIDI software synthesizers, such as FluidSense or Timidity or whatever. And in FluidSense, there's a, uh, an open issue that it should support MIDI too. And I am actually uh, somewhat involved in that thread, but I haven't really written a lot of code since then, so it's still open. But there are rooms for that. Okay, I'm almost done. Let me summarize everything. So MIDI 2 is a modern upgrade from MIDI 1, and it's paying attention to backward compatibility. And it has limited platform support, and there's no instrument devices in the market yet, but it doesn't matter because we could just use MIDI 1 connections. And audio plugins APIs are similarly featureful, but uh, MIDI, MIDI 2 will make things standard, so it's good. And the audio plugins are getting ready to uh, accept and deal with UMP, so it's worth to learn. So uh, it's a new field to learn, and it's uh, an interesting field for some people, like me, maybe. <laughs> okay, done. Thank you so much. And any questions? I will be staying around here for, I mean, somewhere for a while, so you can always catch me and shoot private questions as well. Uh, hello. Uh, my my question is not uh, directly related to the MIDI tube, but I want to ask: uh, uh, How do you think of the clap plugin format versus the LV2 plugin format? Uh, what, what do I think? Of, what do I think about what? Clap. Clap audio music. For, yes, oh. clap versus LV2. Why, oh. why do we need oh. another open standard since we have LV2? Yes, that's a very good question. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling, a complicated feeling about that, uh, indeed. <laughs> like, LV2 is actually yeah, quite featureful, and, uh, well, uh, it supports uh, not, not only for Linux, but it's extending for Mac and Windows, and in the club, uh, when uh, club was announced, they are using a f famous forum called, called the KVR. On the KVR forum, many people are acting, reacting like, oh, LV2 was also able to handle it. And I mostly agree that. And the club developers were like, when I tried to use LV2, I didn't, I didn't really understand what I was doing. So they don't see, didn't seem to understand what LV2 is. But yeah, the good part of his club is, well, for both strategic part and the implementation part. And this implementation is really simple. And it's, I tried to implement something using club, I mean, for hosting, and it, it was really simple. And uh, it was worth uh, at least learning 
something to find new or how to make things simple. And the strategic side, they were making very good, interesting move. Like they start with the actual products to apply to, I mean, the commercial products. And they say they partner with Yuhi, which is a popular plugin vendor, and then release a lot of um, club ready plugins already in the market. And they were extending partners together. So the most important part for audio plugin world is to get more audio pl professional plugins in the world. So they are making a really good move about that. That is kind of fat, fat kind of uh, kind of failed in the LV2 world. But it, there would be a chance for LV2 because now that the Juice framework officially supports LV2, so there would be a lot of room for that. Would that answer to your question? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, since it's time, the time is up. So let's thank you, Azuki-san, again. Thank you so much.